praise the Lord. If everybody could be making their way in. We are going to start off today with our monthly star awards for our Sunday school. These are the children that have perfect attendance. They are in Sunday school class every Sunday at 1030. They are not late and they're always on time. So we're going to recognize them today. So if everybody will just come on in and have a seat. So thankful for the spirit that we felt already this morning when the choir was singing and practicing. It was just a wonderful presence of God. We're so thankful for that today. So if everybody just come on in, please, so that way we can recognize everyone this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, We're going to start off. This is our um, April awards. Uh, These are all the kids in the preteen class, we're going to start with them first, that were uh, in class every Sunday at 1030, and they're going to be recognized uh, with a perfect attendance ribbon, and their name has also been put into the drawing for our monthly gift card, okay? And we're going to start off today, the preteen class taught by Brother Micah and Sister Madeline Brummett. First one today is Hunter Ratliff. Let's all give Hunter a hand. All right, Jesus Garcia. Good job, Jesus. Evelyn Camarillo. And then the last one for the preteen class, Michaela Smith. All right, and the King's kids, ages 7 to 9, Hermione Underwood. Layla Mejia. Lucas Ratliff. And Bentley Pope. All right, and this is our Bible buddies, ages four to seven. We have Ian Duncan. Congratulations. Eric Mejia. He'll come get his prize later. (laughs) He's a little shy. Micah Edwards. All right, Charlie Wilson. Chastity Wilson. And our Little Angels class, we had Abigail Ratliff. And these are our Sunday School Stars for the month of April. Let's give them all a hand. Now we're going to do the drawing for the gift card. Brother Perry Inman, would you draw a name for me? Lucas Ratliff. Thank you. Now, y'all uh, keep a, be, or be on the lookout. We're going to be starting a new contest for the summer quarter that's going to be specifically for the summer. And uh, just congratulations to all of them. Let's give them another round of applause. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's give our children another hand. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Let's all stand all across the house today. Turn to somebody and give them a smile, maybe a handshake or a fist bump. Amen. It's good to see everybody today. Amen. Woo. How many were at men's conference this weekend? Yes. Praise God. We, we get to hear from Brother Poe here in a little bit. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to what God is going to do today. Amen. Hallelujah. As we prepare to enter into worship today, I just felt to do something a little bit different this morning. The choir's already been praying and, uh, and worshiping the Lord today. Um, we're going to sing a couple songs that are very familiar. First, going to open with a song that says, I believe you're my healer. You believe that today? Amen. Amen. We, have, uh, we have many needs represented both in the congregation today, I'm sure, and, and outside as well. Uh, I believe Sister Child is still in the hospital. Is that right? Yes. Sister Child is in the hospital. We have other people that are out dealing with sickness. Um, others, including myself, have dealt with sickness this week. And uh, just a lot of things going on. And when things start to happen like that, I told the choir, said, you know, it, it could be a spiritual attack. There's times when the enemy brings sickness and brings uh, things against us. And then there's times where, you know what, it, maybe it's just life. Maybe it's just life. Like, that's it, it, part of life. You get sick, you have struggles and trials. Paul said that's common to man. Amen? So it really doesn't matter if it's the enemy or if it's just, just part of life. But we know the answer is to go to God in prayer. Amen? So what we're going to do today as we begin to sing and worship the Lord, I'm going to go ahead and open these altars. If you have a specific need in your life, whether it's a physical healing, whether it's a spiritual need, anything, these altars are open. If you want to come and stand in for somebody, maybe you've got a lost loved one, maybe you've got somebody that's not here, they're sick, they're dealing with something, you want to come, in, come and stand in for them in faith today, whatever you want to do. And if you don't want to come to the front, that's fine, but let's turn this whole sanctuary for a little bit into a prayer room. Can we do that? And as we begin to sing and worship, we're singing in faith, and we're singing declaring, I believe you're my healer. And it's not just a song, but it's a prayer. And as we begin to worship the Lord, as we begin to cast our cares on Him, we believe that miracles can happen. Amen? Do you believe God wants to do miracles for His people? Do you believe God wants to do miracles in the lives of His people? Amen. So we're, going to, we're just going to begin to worship Him. Let's see what God will do today. Say, I believe. You're my healer. I believe you are all I need. Come on, if you know it, sing it to him. Sing it in faith. I believe, I believe you're. You're all I need. Oh, yes, you are. Come on, lift your voice. Sing it out. I believe, Lord. I believe that you're my healer. Come on, the Holy Ghost is moving right now. The Spirit of God is already here. Come on, let's receive what He's got for us. Lord, I believe.
daily. Maybe it's something in your emotions, your mind, your spirit. Maybe you just need that peace that passes all understanding. God can heal. God can work. God can give you what you need today. Go through the fire. He walks with me. You walk with me through the fire. And this is Bible right here. You heal all my disease. Come on, that's straight from the Word of God. So here's what we do. I trust. And then you speak to that situation. You command that it be cast in the sea. If it's cancer and the doctors say there's no hope, we've done all we can do. Then you call to a, a higher power. You go to the great physician. And you say, cancer, the doctors can't fix it. But cancer, the great physician says, you must be healed. You must be healed in Jesus' name. I'm appealing to a higher authority. I'm appealing to the Word of God. And 
and I'm standing in faith saying, I believe there is nothing is, nothing is impossible with my God. And just like the Hebrew boys, they said, King, our God is able to deliver us. But if not, we're still not going to bow. Their faith was so strong that they said, you know what? I know God can fix this, but even if he doesn't, I'm still going to stand in faith. Even if it doesn't happen, I don't care. My faith is so strong that I'm putting all my trust in God. And I know that he's going to take care of me. Even if I die right here today, he's going to take me home to be with him. So it doesn't matter what the circumstance, doesn't matter what the outcome is. My God, my God is the answer. He doesn't just have the answer, but he is the answer. Come on, say nothing is. Nothing is impossible. Oh, nothing is. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is. Nothing, nothing is impossible. Oh, Lord, you're in control. You hold
done in Jesus' name. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen in this place. Ladies, would you sing that? Ladies, help us sing. A miracle. It is happening in Jesus' name. Come on, God's doing the work. It might already be done. It might already be done when you get home, when you get to work tomorrow. It might already be done. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen in this place. Oh, yes, a miracle. A miracle. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's just let the Lord speak to your hearts in this room. Come on, this is what it's all about right now. This is having church. Come on, I pray the Holy Ghost will move from outside in the hallways, outside in the port of Shea, all the way back to the baptistry right now. Wherever somebody's standing, I pray the Holy Ghost will touch you where you are. In the name of Jesus, come on, the power of the Lord is here. The healer is here. The way maker is here. The promise keeper is here right now. If you have a need, lift your hand right where you are. Wherever you are, stop and lift your hand and say, God, this is where I'm at. I need you, God, right now. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Touch every need in this room. Right now, let the power of the Holy Ghost, God, saturate this house right now. Let your spirit go before every seat, God. We worship you. Come on, we're worshiping the Lord, the King of kings in this room. Worship him together right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Don't you love what you feel in this house? The presence of the Lord is here. Jesus is here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Go ahead. Worship with your family. Worship with who's beside you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, me and grab your wife, grab your children, and teach them how to worship in this room. Oh, we worship you, God. We worship you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, let's just keep worshiping the Lord a minute. We have a, we're going to baptize a young man that says he's got to do it now. He's repented of his sin. He's got some uh, uh, stuff in his life. He says, I want it gone. He wants it washed out. Come on, this is what it's all about. We're going to baptize him before we hear the man of God today. But how many would help me pray today for Tommy? I believe Tommy can be touched in a mighty way. Come on, God knows it. Would you lift your hand and just help me pray? God, in the name of Jesus, uh, I believe right now with Tommy, when he gets ready to go in this water, God, you're going to baptize him with the Holy Ghost and with the Holy Ghost and fire. We're going to baptize him with water, but God, you whose shoes are we're not worthy to bend down and latch, uh, you're going to baptize him with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I believe he comes out of this water today. He's going to have strength to overcome the past. You're going to deliver him from his past. Uh, you're going to wipe his slate clean today. He's going to be a brand new creature in the Lord. I, God, we know your hand is going to be on him as he comes out of this water today. God, I want to rejoice with the kingdom of heaven, to, the angels of heaven today. God, for this one soul that's going to, about to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of his sins. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to touch where he's at. Go ahead, guys. Let's baptize in the name of Jesus Christ today. Hallelujah. There's no other name given under heaven whereby you must be saved except through the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God touched Tommy today. Hallelujah. Tommy confessed it just a moment ago, speaking in tongues as God gave the Holy Ghost here at the altar this morning. And I'm telling you now, he wants to go down in the name of Jesus, the saving name, the powerful name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. How I many knows God's going to help him today in the name of Jesus? Touch it, Lord. We believe it. Let's baptize him, gentlemen, in the name of Jesus. Do it, God. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless this family, God. Bless them today, oh God. Your spirit, Lord, can do it today. I believe it right now. Holy Ghost, come on, speak, Lord, in your name, Jesus. Let's keep our minds on God for just a moment as we baptize Tommy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Touch him, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, kids, y'all can see it real good back here by the screen if y'all want to come back here so we can, y'all blocking the video, okay? We can't see him on the video. Praise God. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Or y'all can just stay there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless them, Lord. Let's believe it right now together in the name of Jesus. Tommy Hill.
upon the confession of your faith and your repentance towards God. Let's believe I now it right baptize now. you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Everybody Jesus, say it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Bless him, God. Come on, Holy Ghost. What a deliverer we have. What a Savior we have. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Tommy. Give it to him, Tommy. Hallelujah. Your life is his life. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Don't you just want to worship the Lord in this house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. hand clap of praise together. What an awesome God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. I tell you what we're going to do right now. We're going to give you a chance to give in Sunday school uh, offering and tithes today. If uh, we have our house here, somebody move it right over here, Brother Smith, for me in the middle. That is our building fund uh, home that we use to put our building fund the first of the month in. I'm, I'm thankful and I want to give God praise that we're way ahead of our church note. Let's give you and the Lord a hand clap for that. Way ahead on a church note, the, the blessings are coming in. And everything you give today toward this house, if it's to pay it off, we'll pay it off today in the name of Jesus. That's what it's about, praise the Lord. So give as the Lord has given you, and he'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Let's pray. God, I love you. Thank you for this opportunity to give in this offering today. Thank you for being able to give tithes and offering according to your word, to what your word tells us and commands us to do. And, Lord, that's what we need to do today. We ask you to be a blessing to those who are bringing their offering. God, we know your word says you would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings to those who give. And we're going to believe every dollar that's dropped, God, you're going to give forward back to that person. And we're going to bind together and believe it today that blessings are going to open in their homes. Not in just money, but finance, physically, mentally, whatever they need, God. You're going to touch every situation. And I believe it in Jesus' name. Come on, let's bring our tithing offering. Shake somebody's hand on the way back to your seat. Tell them how much you love and appreciate them in Jesus' name. Let's sing a chorus, God. So I mean, he's glad to be in a church that you can feel God. To be in a church that God said where two or three are gathered together, he'll be in the midst. And we're here to gather together today in his name. And God is in this house. And I'm so thankful that we're here today. 
Amen. I know we have some that's out, but God knows if we're watching, by the way, God can touch through the camera as well today. And we believe that today. And we are live streaming today, but I believe those who are having to watch it by live stream, God's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost today as well. In the name of Jesus, praise God. How many is ready for the Word of God today? Amen. Praise God. The Word that God has brought to us today. I'm excited. Brother Poe has taken time out of his life to come to our men's ministry. If you missed men's conference, shame on you, number one, if you are a man. But number two is you missed an awesome conference, praise God. It was so good. Men's conference was needed. It was one of the best that we've ever had here at Carryville, praise God. One of the best ones we ever had because it's the first one, praise the Lord. But we're planning on having many more. If you missed this one, look for the calendar next year. It's going to be awesome. We're going to see it grow. God done. But Brother Poe took time. And man, did he ever preach to us men. I'm telling you what, he did, and we enjoyed every word of it. But this morning, Brother Poe, I want you to know, I want you to come and let the Lord have his way. Amen. And speak through you. Preach to me today. Praise God. Everybody say, Brother Poe, preach to me. Use him in the name of Jesus. Come on, Brother Poe. Obey the Lord today in Jesus. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody clapping your hands to Jesus. What a wonderful thing to see someone baptized in the name of the Lord. Great meeting. I was so honored to be a part of your men's ministry. For many years I quit uh, preaching camp meetings and men's ministries and ladies' ministries. I quit. just didn't seem like we were achieving much. And uh, so I just, the way I preach, some people don't like it, and sometimes I don't like it. <laughs> I go back to the room and I go, what did I do that for? And uh, I know I've never been here, but certainly a beautiful church. Thank the Lord for the great pastor. And I'm real happy to have met him and uh, wonderful music. Um, normally... When a man preaches the first service, it's kind of a I get to know you message. And then people either walk out and they go, man, that I like that guy. Or they walk out and go, no, nah, that, that kind of preaching ain't for me. So, uh, I, you know, and, uh, and, and so all evangelists, I've been evangelizing for 33 years all across America, and uh, it's kind of like, I guess it's that way in every church. It's just when, when you go to a new church, it's like meeting somebody new. You don't know nothing about them, and so you find a, a kind of uncomfortable a little bit. Let's find out some things, and then we'll make a decision. And certainly early this morning, I was preparing to do the easy way, which would be to preach a message that maybe 60 or 70 percent of you would like, and we could get out and go eat, and then y'all would think I was a short-winded preacher and want me to come back. But unfortunately, I was sitting out there in the pastor's office, and maybe unfortunately for me, and um, then I walked out and came down, and y'all were doing the thing on the children. And I just stood there and watched it, and the Lord said, go sit in that green chair. And I thought, what? I was fixed to come in here. And so I sat in that green chair out there. In fact, there was one of them a little bit out of place. And uh, he said, sit in that chair. So I moved it back in place and sat down, and he said, open your Bible. I did. Y'all were singing by that time. And he said, close your eyes and listen. And I did. And when I got in here, I realized that the Lord had some stuff he wanted to work on now. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. So just help me. And uh, realize I'm not the cookie-cutter preacher. I don't, uh, as men have seen this weekend, I don't follow a set pattern. 
And uh, so you ladies will just have to try to figure it out as we go along, all right? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, uh, just try to, figure it out, try to figure him out. All right, let's go with 1 John. And I want to read just one little verse of Scripture. 1 John. I want to go to the fourth chapter in the 18th verse. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment, and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. The subject in this one scripture is not love, it's fear. That's what this whole scripture is about, fear. And so I'm going to preach today a message called the old man. The old man. You may be seated. I believe that America is under a spiritual attack. We have always had to put up with sin. But little did the church realize, the American church, that we would be graduating into another dimension from sin into wickedness. I read this morning that Bruce Jenner, which is now Caitlyn Jenner, I think her name, he or she or whatever it is, is Caitlyn Jenner, and now running for governor of California, which that may be the only place would elect someone like that, I don't know. But then the statement was, Caitlyn Jenner said, I don't know whether to call him a he or she, I don't know. I'm just going to say a he, she. And I told you I was different. <laughs> oh, I heard somebody say, hit me. <laughs> as a term you ladies are going to have to get used to hearing. Now, Caitlyn Jenner said it's not right for transgenders to perform in women's sports. Now, you talk about messed up. It was a man, young people, that was the greatest athlete in the world, Bruce Jenner, Olympian. It was a man that got married to the Kardashians. Now, let me tell y'all something about the Kardashians. There ain't never been a man marrying the Kardashian family yet that didn't get messed up. So y'all think about that when you want to follow the Kardashians. They've been in some marriage many times, and there's so many different people, they can't even keep up with it. I mean, I, I read where one of them's dating her ex and then realized it was her ex and quit. That's the reason you need to start watching what your kids are watching and, and following. Because you don't, you don't need them to idolize people like that. They, they made a multi-million dollars off of being sex symbols, which is against the Bible. So what we had was an Olympian man, decathlon, I mean, he was the man, then he gets married Stays married for a while. She gets messed, he gets messed up with her. So he decides the only way out is to become a woman. So he becomes a woman. And now it would look too weird. I don't know why he thought it would look weird. The women are marrying women everywhere. But anyway, he, he thought it was a way out. And then, now he's going to say that transgender shouldn't perform in girls' sports. Well, I agree with that. 
I agree that a transgendered person shouldn't perform. I mean, that'd be like me putting on a wig, and 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 or y'all, I can't do it anymore. But me putting on a wig and playing running track against girls. Now, if I can't beat a girl, you know what I mean? I, I outran the law. So I know I can outrun a girl. And they had guns. So this world has now slipped in from sin to wickedness to evil. So now kids are putting up with all this stuff so I want to share with you young people real quick some stuff before I do, do my preaching. First of all, there has never been a child born where the doctor didn't tell the parent what the child was. Can I get a witness to that? There's never been a child born where a doctor pronounced, we aren't for sure we're going to wait till they get 13 to make up our minds. They say, this is a boy or this is a girl. So if the doctor knows And the mama knows something else is telling the kid a lie. Can you say amen? You say, well, I know somebody that's messed up, and they think that's the truth. They're messed up. They're, I ain't never seen no man I date. I ain't never seen, I've seen some of them dudes. In fact, I'll tell you all this. My wife would kill me if she was here, but I'm 68 years old. This this used to be my chest, and it it just went on layoff one day. It just said, no more. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And I looked down, I went, oh, but what in the world is that thing? And um, (laughs) my wife sent me a picture the other day of me when I was about 34, and I used to look like Tom Cruise, and uh, that, that was true, man. When I sang rock and roll, uh, one time I used to look like, uh, th- you know, I used to look like uh, the guy that sang in Queen. I had buck teeth and all that. He had short hair, I had long hair. and, and uh, But my, my wife sent me a picture, and it, it was one of them, uh, she knows how to do the phones better than me, I don't care about it. But, you know, you get two pictures, and you put them on the same thing, and or four or whatever, and you can send them, and, you know, befores and afters. And she sent me, this is what I married. Well, I had sent her a a picture when she was gone to see her mother, and what I'd done is I'd put on, I'm a real big prankster, and what I'd done is I'd put on one of them shower caps them women use, you know, that cover up their hair, and I'd put on one of them, and I'd put on some of her pink, her green glasses, and then I'd put on my COVID mask, and I said, hurry home, I'm lonely. <laughs> and so she'd put this collage together, and she went, I was coming home when I saw this picture on my phone. Now that I've seen this one, I think I'm going to stay another week. <laughs> but when we see the wickedness that is around us, I want all you kids to hear this. I just had a, a, a doctor say to me, you know, we don't know which came the chicken, first the chicken or the egg. And I looked at her and I went, you don't read the Bible? She said, well, of course. I said, then you need to start at the front and it'll tell you where all things came from. It was the chicken. It was a chicken. Everything that was created was created whole. How many of you ever been to the zoo? 
I went to the zoo to see my in-laws one time. And I mean, with my in-laws one time and we met some of their relatives. And how many of you ever went by them lion cages? Do y'all ever get a little scared when them lions come towards that glass? Me, y'all don't? Man, I, I'm like, you know what? This, I'm, I'm kind of getting where this sucker might want some of the, you know. Hey, hey, he, they come in there and they're looking at you, and I'm thinking, can they see through glass? I mean, who made that glass? How thick is that glass? Could that old thing just break the glass? I mean, well, that's kind of trusting somebody, you know. But have you ever been by the, listen to the young people, have you ever been by the gorilla cages and the monkey cages? Have you ever heard a monkey say, don't feed me, I'm getting out tomorrow? Nobody? Me either. So we couldn't have come from monkeys because if we did, something powerful sure did stop us from recreating monkeys to humans, right? So whatever had the power to stop the process also had the power not to begin the process. Can I get a witness on that? Now, I know we've got monkeys in our family. I got, I got some monkeys in my family. People act like monkeys, but they are, they're not. They just have monkey tendencies. So what I want to share with you, young people, is that what you're getting fed is absolutely against the Bible. You cannot believe that we came from a monkey or that we were an amoeba, just like I told one scientist, he said, well, we were amoebas. I said, who made the amoeba? He went, well, I, I, we don't know. I said, well, we, amoebas were what? He said, we washed up on shore. And then I said, well, who made the water? Who made the, who made the sand? Who, see, it don't make sense. You can't believe everything you're being told. Look at your neighbor and say, think about it. Don't just believe it. There's a problem that exists in humanity because we want to believe everything we're told. My, my, my grandpa had a coon dog that now that I know wasn't even a coon dog, but they'd play dominoes. And when this old dog would rear his head up, my grandpa would say, look at there, he's smelling a coon in another county. Well, as a kid, I was like, man, my grandpa, he's got a coon dog that could smell coons all the way from Longview to Gilmer. And I told Papa one time, I said, that dog must be worth a lot of money. And he said, well, you know, he, he's worth a lot of money to me. What it was in the domino game, he would get people distracted by talking about the coon dog, and he would win the domino games. We can't be distracted in the end time by people that are talking about everything that's setting everything up for the Antichrist. That's exactly what COVID did. The Chinese chemical warfare that happened on America is what God did allow was that that showed everybody how quickly one-third of the planet can, can become dead. There's no country in the planet that wasn't affected by COVID. Not one. There's a billion people in India right now no vaccines, no nothing. So what it showed us, young people, elders, is that revelation is true. That in the moment an angel pours out the vial, one third of the people in this planet will start dying. And we've seen a precursor to that. It's happened right in front of our face. What happened is, when we look back into Genesis, 
we can see that Adam had complete dominion over the Garden of Eden. Everything that was there, he named. That's the reason it's funny to me because Eve was made outside the garden. She wasn't made in the garden. You look in the verses, chapter 3, she was... Adam was taken out of the garden. And I like to read the Bible for, I, I read it totally different than the normal person does. He, he was taken out of the garden and, and, and this woman was made. Now she had to be the most beautiful woman ever created, period, because he took a rib out of Adam to make Eve we know that she had to be beautiful because when he woke up, he said, whoa, man. And God said, okay. <laughs> this is not a Catholic church. You can smile. And the reason I know that's a fact is because if it had been me or any other man in here and she would have been ugly, we would have said, hold on just a minute, God. I got some more ribs. Let's try it again. We know that. Or at least I would have. So Eve was then placed in the garden. So Adam had control over everything. You don't find one time written in the scriptures where the serpent ever tempted Adam. Not one time, because Adam's relationship with God was so strong that the serpent knew, I cannot disturb that relationship. But you find where he began to talk to Eve. Over and over and over, this didn't happen one time. That old serpent said, you mean to tell me the Lord made something that you can't eat? Well, you're not going to die if you eat of that fruit or touch of that fruit. In other words, he began to torment her. How many of you have ever, you ladies, ever been to a, 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 a Dillard's or whatever and you had a certain dress you wanted and you went in there and they didn't have your size? I mean, I, raised, I better not raise my hand, but, you know, raise your hand. You, you, did you ever, didn't you walk away like, you got to be kidding me. They have got every size in here but mine. My wife will get so upset, she'll go back nearly every day. And it'll be like, well, surely they're going to get some more. And I'm just like, well, I, you know, I don't know nothing about it. It's, it's, it begins to torment her. Eve was getting tormented by Satan because she started looking at a tree she wasn't even supposed to be looking at. Finally, she gets old Adam to concede to, to take a bite of it. But the Bible said it wasn't a bite. The Bible says don't touch or eat. So you can't eat something you're not touching. Like I told these men in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the conference, you can't drink a beer that you ain't got in your hand. You got to have a touch. When he touched it, he was already committed to sin. What he did was then he went ahead and gave dominion power to back to or to the serpent because he had dominion over that serpent, but now that serpent has dominion over him. And so therefore they were cast out of the garden because they had handed dominion power because they had been tormented. I believe that we put up with much more spiritual attacks than we should. When tormenting spirits begin to torment us, we Pentecostals seem to want to hide and pretend that it's not happening. What we need to do is understand that a tormenting spirit is not satisfied with an inch, they want the whole mile. They want to humiliate you. They want to see you lose your faith. 
They want to take dominion over you. A tormenting spirit is something that will tell you about your past. It'll keep bringing up why you can't progress to the future because look at what you did in the past. It'll give you a dream about what you did in the past. I had a tormenting spirit that came at me even as a preacher that would give me dreams about what I did in drug deals. And finally it dawned on me, this is a tormenting spirit. I don't have to put up with a tormenting spirit because God has given me power. I can be free from anything that torments me. All I want to do is be free. And if you cannot be free, somebody's got to pray for you until your freedom comes. Everybody stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. We, I'm addressing a certain issue in here. See, Satan wants to destroy your progress. When you got the Holy Ghost and you got baptized in Jesus' name, ultimate dominion power was handed back to you. Now, I, I, I told the men, and I'll tell you ladies, I've been in prison. I've done big, huge drug deals. I'm a criminal from the thugs and all that in the 70s and 80s, played in rock bands and been to prison. And like I told the men, I, I, you know, I, I can't own a gun or nothing, so I bought my wife about 20-something of them. You know, I want her to know, you know, I got all kinds of stuff for her. Uh, you know, I tell the men, I even have, well, I better not tell everybody. I don't know. Some of you might be a DEA. Y'all still been following me for all these years. I don't know what what's going on with that, but not really. One one cop, they did at one church trick me, and a cop walked in the back and said, I'm looking for Gordon Poe, and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, God. Had one pick me up at the airport, a captain of the police picked me up at the airport, had fl lights, flash, uh, lights flashing. He was standing there by his car, and I come walking out looking for the pastor, and he said, are you brother? Are you Gordon Poe? I said, yes, I am. And he said, get in this car. And I was like, oh, oh, no, they don't. What did I? And I looked at him. I said, sir. And he said, get in this car. And I said, uh. <laughs> Started backing up. I said, man, I'm a preacher now. And he said, I, I'm here to pick you up. I said, oh, uh, uh, what charge? <laughs> what year? <laughs> Had to be a long time ago. <laughs> I said, well, I ain't done nothing. I've just been preaching. He said, get in the car. I said, well, yes, sir. And I put my clubs, I mean, my bags in there. And, and he took me straight to the pastor's office. And I went, you have got to be kidding me. All these preachers were up there going, we got you, didn't we? I was, I was riding the whole time asking him, you know, officer, I don't think I ever did anything in Missouri. I, I don't remember going through here. I mean, it could have been an LSD trip, but I'm, I don't think that I've ever been here physically. I probably here was when Jimi Hendrix was playing, and I, he, he was just quiet. They got me. But everybody at the airport was looking at me like, oh, my God. Taking like you know them little video camera things on their phone, and I went. Now they're gonna have my face on the brochure. That dude just got picked up by the cops. And now he's preaching revival. <laughs> when you got out of the holy, when you got the Holy Ghost, Jesus gave you back dominion power. You have His name. Look at your neighbor and say, if you've got the Holy Ghost and you've been baptized, you got power. That's what I thought. Y'all was going to say it like, like, like somebody like just barely got a little black cat. You got power. You got dunamis, power. You got enough to overcome. You have enough that the devil is afraid of you. I want you to realize evil is afraid of an apostolic Pentecostal that rejoices in the Lord and proclaims the Lord as his Savior and his King. The devil is afraid 
of any, I don't care if you're 20 years old, 15 years old, or 108 years old, you got to remember that the devil does not want you to be successful because you've got dominion power over him. Can somebody holler amen? So he has to intimidate. It's written that the devils tremble But we don't use the power. What we do is just what happened here. Instead of an explosion, we've got used to hearing it and not using it. We've got used to hearing it but not exercising it. Now, I've got weights at home. I used to lift weights. I got a 19 and a half inch neck. I, I used to lift weights. But my weights don't do any good sitting over there on the floor. The other day I jerked him up. I got a six foot five son, and, and he's real buffed up and karate and all that mess. And I told him, I said, You can learn all you want to about that. But I said, I'm, let, me go get one of my, let me go get one of your mama's guns, and I'll show you about karate. I said, you can do all that kung fu fighting right out there. That's the reason when I would fight with them Japanese guys and Chinese guys, that didn't bother me. They'd, they'd get into that, ha, ah, ah. By that time, I'd have knocked them out. It's like, I ain't letting you warm up. You know, just as soon as they went, ah, did like that, just hit them. And uh, so, but, but the weights don't do any good as long as, it, so I picked up one the other day. I said, let me tell you something, son. Daddy's still strong. And I jerked that thing up off the ground. I started doing like, dum, dum, dum. and about 20 of them, it was like. <sighs> Hold on just a minute. I got to rest. Dad, he looked at me and said, Dad, you used to do 50 of those. And I said, yeah, but, 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 but hold on just a minute. I said, uh, you know, uh, um, sometimes your blood don't flow right. And. And, and, and so you got to, you just kind of, he said, oh, Dad, what it is, you're getting older. And I was, I'm not getting older. And I reached down, I grabbed that thing again. I'm not getting older. Well, I can see, you know, I'm thinking I'm getting a little bit older. The next day, I couldn't even brush my teeth. I got in my arm, I was like, oh. oh. My wife would say, what's wrong with your hair? I don't know. I can't get my hand up. My hand, I I was just like a short order, short order cook. I was just walking around all day like, oh, my Lord, that hurts so bad. See, what happened was I got out of practice, and now when I grab something heavy, I got to start nearly all over. You know what happens to Pentecostals is when, or we Holy Ghost feel people, when the devil starts tormenting us about something, especially if it's something that's true, then we begin to, as a human, to back up and start thinking about, you know, I really did do that. Has, has anybody ever had a thought about what you've ever done and you realize, yes, I did do that? Would you raise your hand if you did that? You know what immediately comes later? Right after that is guilt. It's what it, exactly what hit me. It was guilt. It was like, you know, I did that. Why did I do that? Then I walked back into church, and it was like, oh, my word. I, 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 I mean, I can't stand up and praise the Lord. I, I mean, I mean, look at all the things that I've done. Look at all the crazy, oh, my God. What happens if one of those dudes that, that I whipped so bad comes to this church and now he's wanting to be a Pentecostal? What, what, you, know, you start dreaming up, and what happens is fear gets bigger. Fear gets, and the Bible says fear becomes torment. In other words, you can't quit thinking about it because the devil knows I've got a little inroad right into her mind or I've got an inroad right into her life or I've got an inroad into his mind or his life and now that I can't, I'm going to torment them so when we start praising, I'm going to remind him or her the reason you can't do what they're doing is because I've got something on you and they, they've been, well, you just sit down and be quiet. We've got to get to a place where fear is not a part of us. Pray. 
praise he is because perfect love, the Bible says, cast us out fear. So I can't come to church afraid of what's going to happen. I've got to come to church excited about what's going to happen. Somebody holler amen. Excited. I want to read you something here. I first heard you preach at the age of 14 at New Life, and you told us God heals. How old was this girl? 14. Is there a 14-year-old girl in the audience? Would you stand? 14. Look at you. Look at her. 14. So, thank you. I just wanted to show you a, a 14. Now, listen to this. At 14, I was talking about God heals those that cannot conceive. That message was not even for her, but she heard it. She listened. She said, after getting married, the doctors and the specialists told me I was not going to be able to have babies due to the damage caused by uh, caused at an early age. Later on, it was more than a diagnosis. It became a reality after surgery. I had a tumor the size of a softball, and it left a hole in my uterus wall. However, you said God would heal. Now, she done got married. She's not 14, but she still remembers a message that I preached when she was 14. And now she's saying what he preached then goes for me now. He wasn't preaching to me then. He was preaching to women that couldn't conceive sitting on the other side. Of, but now that I'm having trouble, I believe that message was for me. She said, then God let me conceive. My pregnancy was labeled high risk. I was on bed rest from week 10. Since then, I had a nightmare almost every night. An old man would stand at the foot of our bed, and he would tell me my baby was going to die. Some nights he would say, she's going to get the same treatment as you. I'll make sure. How did the devil know it was going to be a girl? I'm wanting you to think today. I'm going to make sure she gets the same treatment as you. I'll make sure. He meant she was going to be raped like I was at the age of five through eight. And that was the cause of all the damage in my body. One night after you finished preaching, my husband asked you to come pray for me. I was sitting on the last row of the church. You asked what was wrong, but my husband said nothing. So you prayed specifically and asked for fear to leave me and for me to receive power over it. That night, the old man showed up, and this time he was on my right side. I didn't even let him speak. I grabbed him with my right hand by the throat. He was not expecting that at all. He kind of backed away, but I wouldn't let go. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I come against you, and I'm not going to just send you away. I'm going to destroy you. The blood of Jesus Christ is against you. And he squealed, and he died. Attached is a picture of my miracle baby. Her name is Phoenix, and she's three months. He, she, he said, I woke up speaking in tongues, and the devil devil never sent that tormenting spirit back. You know why? She took power over that spirit. She took power over that nightmare. She took power over that dream. Look at your neighbor and say amen. She said the message he preached when I was a kid. I was in Denver, Colorado. And a lady, I said, some lady, big, huge crowd, I said, there's a lady on my left having nightmares. I want you to come quickly. And an older woman come, and the pastor sitting over there, he said, my Lord, she'd been a faithful member of the church. And for 18 years, she'd been dreaming the same dream, coming in condemned, still filling the pew, still clapping her hands, but walking in condemned of a nightmare for 18 
15 years. I told her tonight, God's going to deliver you and heal you. We took her out drunk in the Holy Ghost. People were having us escort her to her car. You know what? If Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then the people in this room that are living in a tormented spirit, if you'll admit it, God will free you today. God will free you today. God is not going to just... You're not hearing me. If something's tormenting your life, you've got to stand up and you have to admit it, and then you have to say, today's the last day I'm putting up with it. I don't have to do it because Jesus said I don't. You you could be seated for a minute. I'm nearly through. I know this ain't a get-to-know-you message. I'm going right after it. I know what's going on in here. I've been sitting out there the whole time. I didn't talk to that TV thing. I talked to the Lord. Y'all, y'all can't fool my height. See, y'all don't know me. He, he don't even know me. I walk out here with you. I'm an old school preacher. I come against devil. I come against, oh, let me put it on CD. That way if it's a Tennessee, where am I at, Tennessee? If the Tennessee district gets it, they'll know exactly what I'm doing. I come against devils. I come against things that destroy. I was a drug dealer. I went to jail. I lived in the jails. You know what? When I got out, I said, them old demons that made me do that, I'm coming after every one of them because the human race doesn't deserve to live under the thumb of the devil and be intimidated like I was. I'm telling somebody in this crowd today, if you have guts enough to get up here, God's going to deliver you today. I ain't talking about tomorrow, and I'm not talking about next week. I'm talking about being delivered today. You don't have to go home and be tormented one more night. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. You don't have to be tormented one more night. Let me tell you what happened with my little wife. My wife didn't know nothing about me being a drug dealer or nothing like that. She wouldn't have never married me. She was pure, innocent, all that. She just didn't, no smoking and drinking and all. She didn't do none of that. She wasn't in the church. She just didn't do none of that. That's the reason I wanted out. And the only way to get out is you got to marry somebody that's out. And uh, it's hard to marry somebody that's out when all you know is the girls that are in. And so my little wife, when I get called to preach, I didn't want to preach. I was telling those guys yesterday, man, I didn't want to be broke. Every preacher I ever knew was broke. It was like I, my daddy was broke. I was like, my word, man, why do I want to do that? And so my little wife, she gets called. See, the, wife, the, the, the husband gets called, but the wife is right in there with him. It ain't a one-man show. And so now she don't know hardly anything about the Lord. And, and they're going to try to kill me and kill her because they're afraid that I'm going to, you know, spill the beans. And, and so they'd already tried to stab me. In fact, somebody goes to this church. I don't know if it goes to this church. I'm looking for you. Uh, Oh, he goes to another church. Uh, the pastor will attest to this. Yesterday, a man walked up to me and he said, uh, "You remember, remember my cousin trying to shoot you in church with the thirty-eight? And I went, "Yep." And he said, "That was my cousin, didn't he?" He said, "Oh, some of them know the guy. Who, who knows the guy? Danny Hood's daddy. Oh, you know him? Okay, that dude tried to shoot me." In church, sis, <laughs> come walking right down the aisle with big old black glasses on, had a hat, black hair, had his hand in the bomber jacket. He got about the third row, and the Lord said he's fixing to shoot you and tell him to stop. And I said, sir, you better stop. God's fixing to drive an angel's fixing to drive a sword down through your head through the concrete, and, we're gonna let, and you're going to die standing up. We'll have to let you lay you down. And he stopped. And when we got him out of there, he had a thirty eight in his and yesterday, the man that was at the meeting, he told me, that's my cousin. He said, well, he's still telling that story. I was like, well, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> and here's what he said. He said, the demon told, he said the demon told him to go kill the voice of truth. Go kill the voice of truth. See, so you're not talking to a novice here. I've been through some stuff that I, if I, if I even told y'all, that ain't the only time somebody's tried to shoot me in church. Yeah, yeah, y'all look at it like, what? I thought, no, no, this, it, you know what I mean? I mean, I ain't going to tell you everything, but not the first service because then y'all wouldn't be able to eat. 
So my little wife, she don't know nothing, and, and the preacher's preaching, and, 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 and one night, you know, a, a preacher pointed me out, and he said, hey, Brother Poe, your type of ministry, you're going to be a devil fighter. And I was like, well, let's, you know, I was young, man. I was like, let's get it on, baby. Get it on. <laughs> Sugar. <laughs> I have to do one or two of those because in, in, it really throws y'all for a loop, you know. She's a brick. And <laughs> y'all are like, oh, my God, he did not do that, did he? Yes, I did. Been doing it for 33 years. They tell me to quit. There's just some things I won't do. <laughs> this kind of keeps me knowing where I came from. And so this thing came in my house. Now, we had two cats. And the cats wouldn't even come out to eat. They'd slink along the wall, get behind the couch, come out and grab food. Then they'd get back down. I started feeling it in my spirit. I was like, something ain't right. And suddenly it dawned on me, the devil is trying to come in here and trying to intimidate where I begin to be fearful. So for two nights, I stayed awake, two nights and two days, waiting on this thing to come. Never did. Finally, on the third night, I was sitting straight up in the bed, and I fell asleep. And my little bride, she, she can feel it. She can feel it in the house. All of a sudden, she felt something step up on the bed, and it woke her up. And she said, coming towards me was a little de devil about this high, had glowing eyes, snaggled teeth, a diamond-shaped eyes, ragged head, big ballooned head, and he was, had his hands out like this, and he was walking up the bed towards me. All I woke up to was, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. My wife really did not believe tormenting spirits until that night. But after that, she realized this is real. That thing was coming after my husband. Now, let me share with you the other day before COVID, a couple of years ago, I'm in Wallace Ridge preaching for Brother Stevenson, and his daughter is sitting over here, which I didn't know who she was. And I said, ma'am, young lady, she's 12. I said, come out here. I want to talk to you. She walked out there, and I said, you've seen him, hadn't you? And she went, what? And I said, you've seen that old devil that's about this high. And she, he's got a round face, and he's got snap teeth and he's got diamond shaped eyes and he she said started bawling and her pastor or her daddy jumped up and said my God last night she came running in from her room and said daddy there's something standing at the end of my bed and told me exactly what you just described in other words that old serpent couldn't get a hold of my wife so he's trying to intimidate and put fear in a 12 year old girl the exact same thing I prayed for her, and God delivered her of that thing, and that thing ain't never come back yet. You know why? Because greater is he that's within us than he that's within that world. I'm going to go after some tormenting spirits today, and bless God, some of you are going home free, free indeed, free indeed. Can everybody stand and give God a praise right now? Free indeed. Clap your hands and make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. 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 Now, remain standing. If you're tormented, in other words, the demons are putting thoughts in your mind that keep you down. It's not just a fleeting thing. It's pressing on you. It's tormenting you. Whether it be from the past, whether it be from yesterday, whether it be from childhood, I want you to come to the front if you want to be healed. There's one right there. There's two. I knew it. I knew it. I sat out there past the Lord told me, just go for the throat right now. I'm a shot my high. Ah, oh, my Lord, there's more than I thought. Hallelujah. God's fixing to do some healing, folks. 
Are you hearing me? I need you men to get ready to start praying in the altars. I need you ladies that aren't tormented to start getting ready to pray in the altars because God's going to do some stuff. Some of you men take your tie down, whatever you got to do. We've been teaching you all weekend how to combat this stuff, and God's going to deliver whoever you are right now. When you walk out of here, you're going to have the biggest smile on your face. You've been living in torment and fear. God's going to put a joy in your heart that's unspeakable. God's going to put a joy in your heart in the name of He's going to, I feel him, he's going to sweep over everybody. In the name of Jesus, raise your hands right now and just start praying. Everybody that can, come pray for these people. I need everybody that can come pray for these people right now. We need women and men that will come right now. And we don't want to, remember what we taught you men yesterday. We need you to pray with authority. We need you to pray with authority in the name of Jesus. I refuse to loose in Jesus' name. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it in Jesus' name. I refuse it. I refuse it in Jesus' name. By your spirit, Lord. By your spirit, Lord. Let her be delivered this day. Let her be delivered this day. That's it. That's it. That's it. By, come on. Come on. All you people, get a hold of somebody and start praying. In the name of Jesus, right now, God. Right now, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. Right now. Come on. God's doing it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Come on, let the Holy Ghost use you. Come on, let the Holy Ghost use you. Come on, men, you've been in church two days. Come on, ladies. In the name of Jesus. 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 Get him to raise his hand. Get him to raise his hand. In the name of Jesus. Come on, right now. Come on, right now. This is real. 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 God's delivering you. God is delivering you. Come on, God's delivering you. Hey, brother, turn around, pray for that girl. Turn around, pray for that girl right behind you, right behind you, right there, right there, right there. Right there, lay hands on her. Hallelujah. Somebody, young lady, take that baby out of her hand. Take that baby out of her hand. That's it. Come on. Free it up. Get Somebody get that baby. Hallelujah. That's it. Come on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's a good boy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fear, leave. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Y'all get a hold of her. Grab her a little bit. That's it. Help her out. Help her out. That's right. That's freedom. That's freedom. That's okay. Just put your hand down like that. It's okay. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. See, that's freedom. That's joy coming back in there. Come on, pray with them. We rebuke fear in the name of Jesus. We rebuke fear. Lay your hands on somebody beside you and pray with the anointing. Pray with the anointing. Pray with the anointing. Loose those people. Loose, loose, loose those people. Loose them from that thing. Loose them from that trauma. Loose them from that spiritual attack. Loose them. I'm going home changed. I'm going home different. Come on, men, help us. Come on, men. Every one of you that's been in this meeting need to be laying hands on somebody. My God, for the, a day and a half, the Lord has instructed us how to have revival. I feel the Holy Ghost sweep in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost sweep in this place. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. By the power of the Almighty God. That's it. That's it. That's it. See, now it's coming to you. Now it's coming to you. Now it's coming to you. 
now it's coming to you. Now you can feel. Now you can feel that tormenting spirit. You're getting dominion over it right now. You're getting dominion over it right now. You're getting dominion over it right now. Come on, hallelujah. It's mine. Freedom is mine. Freedom is mine. Feel better? Feel better? Huh? You got it, girl. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord was trying to do to us. I'm not going to live in torment. I'm not going to live in torment. I'm not going to live with the old man in my life. I'm not going to live with the old man in my life. Come on, pray for somebody. It's happening all over the place. If you feel better, lay your hands on somebody else. Lay your hands on somebody else. Get a hold of them. Tell them. You don't have to live with it. Right now, you're going to get delivered from it. Hallelujah.